One of the things that we're doing in this documentary is talking just a lot about strength and where we find strength and trying to help other families who may find themselves in similar situations. So I wanted to start with the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women's Inquiry, that final report. The report was kind of the end of a process, but what does it mean to you and to your family? I wanted something to come out of uh, for children, for my granddaughter. Her mother was murdered, so I wanted something. And I think they are working on it, so... Yeah. Actually, what I was finding is a lot of, and it's not a bad thing, but a lot of prevention. Yeah, looking at the recommendations, I just didn't see a whole lot that helped in the situation that we're in now. Uh, we still have no connection with any of the local RCMP due to some circumstances. We also do not have access to victim services in our local community, uh, which is a choice of ours. I agree 100% with what a lot of them are saying, eh? Mm -hmm. But there's a lot more things that should be done. I don't believe in all this planning or uh, recommendations. You say, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. I don't believe in that. What we've done in our search for our daughter has changed the, the way PA police do business with in respects to um, missing persons. We've raised that awareness. We've raised that, yeah, we are not going to go away and that we want answers and we want them to do their jobs. So. Like it hasn't even hit the ground running yet. Like the report may be done, but where's the action? Where's the call? Call the action where how come our girls are still missing? The release really didn't help me internally deal with the loss of my daughter. It's been pretty much still the same. You know, I, I rely a lot on family and my culture. But yeah. One of the things that we encounter a lot is a big report like this, like you said, 1,100 pages sits on a shelf. People feel like well, we've talked about this now, and people think that's the end of an issue. But what is it like for you as a family member, even after the release? I'm not sure, <laughs> honestly. That day when the ceremony began, I, I felt like I didn't want to be there. I have a mental health worker. I was going to the sweat, but there's COVID now, so a lot of things stopped. And so it is kind of hard. It's tough. We live through this on a daily basis. Our loved one is still missing. Um, at the beginning, when we started going to court, um, some of the legal terms that were mentioned during the court proceeding, we couldn't even understand it. I wish we had a lawyer sitting beside us explain the process, what's going to happen. There's an awareness that's there that people can't just brush this off anymore. The, 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 the history of colonization 
has gone to such extremes and it's become so much of a part of our, our normal day, everyday life. It's got to change. It's got to be one little piece of a puzzle. That still needs to be done. Because when you come to counseling and sharing, in a sense too, I'm thankful people are talking about it and things are starting to happen. But I feel it should not be shut off just because this report is done. One is they're slowly becoming aware that they need to address this pain again because a lot of us put it on a burner and did the best we could, but the, the pain is embedded in us still pretty deep. It's good to make a report but it would also be good to continue with the healing process. For a lot of people who don't understand what it's like to have a, a missing or murdered family member, what advice would you have for other families about how to come together to, to start on this path? To not be afraid to speak out and ask for help. Um, I, I sometimes feel nervous even being around like a big group of people <laughs> and new family members and it's uh, it's scary. It's hard to take in that people in the same area have had the same thing happen. Um, but we all have our own stories and our own paths that we've walked and everyone is different in their own way. You know what, we find hope through other families. You know, making those connections, seeing, you know, Happy Charles family here today. We've made a real bond with them. Finally getting to meet Brian and his wife, uh, Megan's dad. That gives us hope. I find my strength in power holes and stuff. Yeah, same here. We try to move ahead, but we know we have to. And we have, well, at least I have now. It's been in 2016. So, but we have her daughter there, and I know what's hard on her. She doesn't show it, but I can see it. I can see it in her eyes and stuff. People can tell you what to do, but that nobody knows what, how you really feel inside. It's hard. It's very hard. We did the inquest, but we don't feel that it's culturally sensitive enough for us or the recognition. You'll find that a lot of families don't want to talk about it because resurfacing those the trauma is hard especially if you don't have any support so one of the things that didn't happen from the inquest when my auntie and i attended the inquest she one of the requests she asked for was to go to the site where they found my mother's body so we can say a prayer because my auntie used the quote my sister is still bleeding from the ground because her murderer was not found so she wanted to do a blessing at the site and that was never honored for us. So in some sense, if you're gonna ask families to talk about this, and we're not all strong, some of us are stronger than others. Like they have the report, it's good you got the report, but what are you doing to support the families you've asked to hear from these stories from? This is hard, this is really difficult to talk about because we feel like it's neglected. There's not enough recognition, we don't feel like there's enough action being taken to protect our indigenous women. We still have a significant amount of women, girls, children, indigenous children going missing. There is no change. In my mind, when I went to the inquest, is I don't want another child's mother murdered. I don't want another mother's daughter to be missing. It hurts, and it hurts me seeing other families hurting the same, the same way I am. Everybody's a brother and a sister. I guess I'm a person, people person. Like, you know, I want to help other people. One person's pain can affect the whole community, you know? And it's true. It's true, like we need to help each other raise a child. Well, we need to get together to help each other. And I like doing these kind of things where we get together and then we get to talk with other families and maybe something that we learned that we can go and help them. You know, maybe they didn't think about going to maybe a sweat or something, you know? Strength comes in numbers. The more people are always encouraged to join in the, the ceremonies and the walks and the vigils every year that happen. It's a subject that people are taking into consideration. 
insights, prayer, little rituals, little things that remind us of Megan because she was kind of a brat sometimes. <laughs> you know, so just things to try and make you not go to those deep, deep, dark places. When I butter my toast, when I have my toast, and I remember Megan saying to me, telling me how to do it because she's a cook and she can learn that this is the way to do it. And then you put the two pieces of toast together because then the butter melts because the heat can. So these little things, and every time when we go to a restaurant, I think, well, how would Megan do this? When we go to a ball game, or when we go to a hockey game, or we go to a sports event. You know, those are those little images that you get that help you through. I've been reading the Bible for many years, since 2005. You know, never anywhere he told us to murder women, to steal children for sex trafficking. No, he always told us, love each other, be kind to each other. I sometimes think of people who murdered our women. They're very hard-hearted people that never experience the love in their life. Because to me, love, love is a great ingredient we all need to function as loving human beings. In today's meeting, the commissioners emphasize the findings are not recommendations, rather calls for justice and legal policy change, stating the first step to creating change is increased education and building relationships between government and communities. As you are graduating uh, tomorrow, last day is tomorrow, graduation is tomorrow, is there anything else you'd like to add about youth and the voices that we need to hear from? I know it's scary to speak up. <laughs> um, I didn't find my voice. I didn't have the strength to talk. Growing up, I was usually the only child at these ceremonies attending. And um, I almost felt alone. And I don't want other children to feel that way. I want a safe space, you know, for them to come to that needs to be included as well. We've talked, or you've talked a lot about the things that you've done as as a family and as friends and as you know. What role do you think men play in, you know, helping to address missing and murdered Indigenous women? We have some strong men in our circle. You know, we have Ashley's dad, Lyndon. You know, and and pulls through each day. You know, I. I commend both Diane and Lyndon for getting up each morning and, you know, still facing the world and and showing us the love they're most, you know, mom is the most amazing at, you know, giving you those hugs or those words of encouragement when we need it, when, when you think about it. I guess speaking for my family, I don't really have a male that's like with our culture and everything that could like help my children or help the youth in my family. So there is definitely a role for them. I love my brother. I wouldn't have been able to get through any of this if it wasn't for him, you know, and him just being strong and silent, you know, like that type of just letting me, just letting me rant, rave, scream, cry, whatever. So definitely. It's, it's new to us in our community, domestic violence, right? Every community has it. Nobody says anything until something tragic happens. I know there's a need in my community for a homeless uh, shelter. So one day, um, I don't want these young mothers and young women to feel like they have nowhere to go. Our men need to heal too. Because every time in our communities, when there's a healing and wellness gathering, who shows up? maybe 20 women and one guy. Our men are looked at as leaders. So they also need to start leading in healing and wellness. It's not only just woman's responsibility. One day you, you hear a piece of news. And you think, um, well, that can't be true. There must be something else. Somebody's made a mistake. 
the recording or somebody's done something that's, or it's just a piece of gossip. And so your, your, your heart starts to race. So how does it change your life? Um, it'll never be the same. I think about Megan and other missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls, two-spirit people. And I have to reflect too that Megan isn't the first Indigenous person, woman, that I've lost. I've lost friends. That, and this is something that most of society doesn't have to deal with. And it wasn't that I didn't warn my kids or teach my daughters that there are dangers out there that you're going to experience that other people aren't going to have to. So you have to be more careful. You have to be more diligent. You have to judge people's character differently. And it wasn't, so it wasn't like that our daughters aren't armed with that stuff, but still something has happened. I don't know where it ends. It maybe ends in the spirit world. When we find and meet again. Finding hope for any missing person, family, would be you'd have to remember who's left. You can't ever lose sight of that. Although we're missing them, and like our daughter's missing them, probably has been, has passed away. We can't forget about the children and the grandchildren because we still gotta live for them and they still gotta live for us. Uh, life doesn't end with, with our daughter being missing or passing away. When they found their mother missing, so they turned back to the drum, back to their singing. They were even singing the times when we'd be searching. What was that like for you as a grandmother? I was proud of them to be able to, and, and most times they um, come out and they console me. I'm, I know they're going through a lot, but they show a lot of strength.